like all awesome project cars, we start with a damaged order from eBay, but we make a little bit of improvements to them. Basically, the first thing we're gonna do, we're taking two axles, one axle from the DSM four bolt rear Mitsubishi Eclipse, that's the one I'm taking the CV off now, and we also have a Mini Countryman SUV all four rear end axle that we're also taking apart. Here's really what we're looking at. There's really old, old grease in the CVs. So while we're in here, we're gonna go ahead and clean everything out, get everything broken down, torn apart, and pretty much sterile to uh, go through all of this process um, and allow us to do our fabrication work and all of our measurements on the axle bars themselves. There's a few different ways to do this. So, you know, right now I'm disassembling the mini rear end axle. Um, this is from the Countryman SUV, I believe from a 2012. One thing that I've done, I've essentially broken all these down and taken all the measurements that I can to try and figure out what my options are for splicing these two axles together. In some cases you need a press to, to get these apart, but it's really not a big deal. Um, I probably could have used a, a mallet, but uh, if you got a press, why not? Now this has a little uh, harmonic damper on here just to balance out, I guess, any imperfections that there might be. And these are the two ends that I need to kind of mate together. And so we're, we're throwing this out. We're not really gonna be using it, but we're taking measurements uh, here. So we got just over one inch on the DSM axle. That's 26.246 millimeters uh, for the metric folk. And we've got 1.01 uh, 1 .01 inches, um, just over 25.6 millimeters on our mini uh, SUV axle bar. What we can do now, we're looking at the splines of the different axles and we're noticing that it necks down just before we get to the splines, uh, which might have worked. I was gonna try and see if I could re-spline the axles since the mini SUV axles are longer. I can cut them down and spline them, but I would have to put the uh, CV joint all the way back here if I wanna have enough meat to actually make the splines work. Um, so that pretty much throws it out immediately. Uh, it would be too short to, to work with. So <clears throat> this means that we're gonna have to change our approach from simply re-splining uh, to cutting up and welding these together. Now the passenger and the driver's side CVs are gonna be different for each car. Uh, or for each side, so you know, one's longer than the other. But uh, if we look here, we'll see that you know this is basically how our CV is on the car. We've got the axle up at height with the uh, suspension uh, strut removed, and I'm marking out essentially where we're cutting the axle. So I went ahead and took an angle grinder um, and cut this down. I didn't have a bandsaw at that time uh, that could make this cut um, straight, so I went ahead and cut it. Uh, as straight as I could, made sure it was at a 90 degree. Uh, we went ahead and beveled the edges. Uh, now we're down to the 0.998 um, inches. So we're, we're really, really close there. And I went straight down the middle with this and made a, a basically a stair step. And you see here I'm at 0.4975. So pretty close with an angle grinder. And now we're gonna be able to lock these two together. So even if the weld on the inside breaks, when we have a sleeve on this, we're gonna be able to hold those two pieces in place and, and lock everything in. And to make sure that we have it all straight, we're using a piece of angle iron here. I use zip ties to hold it in place, but what would have been better, because it's obviously welding metal, would have been using hose clamps. And I cut an old can from a, a brake cleaner can just to kind of prop it up while I made some tack welds on the side. <clears throat> Now you wanna make sure you don't overheat this, but you also wanna make sure you get enough heat penetration on there as well. Uh, you don't wanna warp or distort anything. Um, and once you get that all set in place, I went ahead, ground down those welds flush. Now you'll actually see that the two axles are slightly different diameter. You can barely tell it in this picture, uh, but you are getting roughly 0.01 inches uh, size difference. And so we have this quarter inch wall sleeve now that we're gonna go ahead and machine to fit perfectly over the axle, slide over it, um, and we're gonna weld that in place. So we threw it up on the lathe, we machined the ends down to, to get a better profile, and we machined the inside of it out so that we're able to get a much better fit on the axle since they are two different size diameters. So it was a, a, not an interference fit, but essentially a perfect fit 
Um, we had to mallet it in place, and then we went ahead and did a full uh, two-pass weld on the outside. We did that to both axles, reassembled all the CVs, um, and you know they, they balance really well. This is them standing actually up on their own, um, but I haven't gotten any harmonics or vibrations that I can physically feel in the chassis. And we went ahead and put, put a black epoxy paint on it as well, and new CV boots, um, as well as new joints, um, new grease inside the, the boots themselves. We tried taking care of the rust as much as we could. We did have some, some slight pinholes, but we went ahead and put a rust converter and scraped as much rust off as we could. Moving to the front end, we're, we've got a tear in our boot, and you can see that the boot itself um, has a pretty nasty crack that's almost all the way through the boot. So to kind of save ourselves some headaches, we're gonna go ahead and pull this thing out. So in here, we're just using a little pry bar, a flathead screwdriver works too, uh, to essentially unfold the, the compression points and, uh, and fix that. Now, one thing to mention on these axles specifically, there's a different type of joint on the outside. It's not a standard like three, um, three lobe CV joint. It is like a six joint, kind of like a, like a lobe road type joint. So it's a little bit more complicated to disassemble. So if you're going to do the inside joint on this vehicle and many other vehicles, since your outer wheel has a lot more flexibility, go ahead and do both sides of it because you're going to have to take this all off again if you want to do the outside joint. So make sure that you're not making more work for yourselves and having to, to do the same thing twice. On the driver's side, we did end up having to replace both. However, uh, we replaced the inside one because it was, it was cracking and it tore pretty soon after, um, right before I replaced this one. And so we went ahead and did both inner joints and then uh, later on the outer joint ended up tearing as well, um, shooting grease all over the inside of the wheel and the brakes and everything else. So we ended up having to do quite a lot more rework on that, which is a little frustrating. And you'll want some really good paper towels to get all this old grease out. Um, it's a lot easier to just scrape this stuff out at first before you start shooting brake cleaner or anything else in there. Um, and it kind of save on paper towels. I'm kind of cutting them in half and reusing them a little bit there. So now that you have everything clean, you got your new boot on, you're going to squeeze in your new, um, molybdenum grease. So the molybdenum gets, is essentially like a, a high shear particle that you can get in there. Um, it's found in a lot of greases, but you can get stuff with a higher content of it to allow for um, more shear protection on those friction surfaces to make sure that you're not squeezing out the grease completely and then you get metal on metal contact. Um, so you will find it more common or with a higher amount, a higher concentration inside of high performance greases. Uh, so depending on what you're using, sometimes they come with them in the uh, packet, sometimes they don't. And one trick that I learned from Papadakis Racing is uh, to actually buy a bunch of these kind of standardized um, crimp-on fittings. So you can use these for AC, you can use them for uh, push connect fittings, uh, but they're really, really cool. And I have this really nice um, tool that I got off Amazon. And as you can see here, it not only squeezes the piece in, uh, and then it actually crimps it downward. And once you have them aligned and you have them all set up, um, these things don't come off. Uh, you can always take them off relatively easily, peeling them off. Um, however, they, they are really on there and they don't ha I haven't had any failure issues with them. And the benefit of buying a bunch of them, like I bought a pack of like 20 of each size, it allows you to go through and rebuild these really easily without having to fiddle with any sort of twisting or any like, if you mess one up, you don't care, you throw it out, you grab another one uh, and you get it all set up. So super easy and I actually, I just, I love that. That was an awesome thing. So big shout out to them for uh, telling me about that. That was cool. So one thing we have to do now, we need to support the carrier bearings under the car. So with a all wheel drive conversion, uh, especially if it wasn't rear wheel drive before, you don't have a place to mount the carrier bearings that hold the drive shaft. Now, if you have a one piece drive shaft, that sort of solves the problem. But in our case, we have a three piece drive shaft. Um, even if we had a two piece drive shaft, we'd still need somewhere in the middle to hold that. And so we're doing the famous CAD from Binky, the cardboard aided design uh, philosophy here where we're using the cardboard since it's a lot easier to cut than the sheet of the plate steel that you're going to use. Uh, and we're mapping out our design here. And we have something in our eyes that, that we want to use. 
uh, so that we can figure figure out kind of all the measurements without having to, uh, you know, something we can cut with scissors instead of with, uh, you know, angle grinders or Dremels or band saws or anything like that. And so what we're doing is our tunnel's actually slightly tapered. So we're making two templates front and rear that are gonna hold the carrier and there's gonna be a captured bolt inside or a captured nut uh, that is gonna hold that in place. And once this piece folds back, you'll see that it gives enough space to actually perfectly mount the carrier bearing uh, and it's gonna be fully welded around and it'll have some areas for water to leak out This is what it looks like in the car. We've got the drive shaft carrier bearing holding in that place. And that's where we're gonna weld it. We cut the heat shield, and then we go into um, cutting the actual sheet metal here. Now, we went ahead and used um, a combination. We used 1 8 in some areas, but mostly we used 1 16th uh, or 16 gauge steel. Um, we found this was actually pretty good thickness, especially when you box it up and you keep it in very short sections. If you're gonna have a longer section, you might wanna go with potentially an eighth inch plate. Um, the challenge with eighth inch plate, other than it being really, really difficult to work with and being very thick, of course, is that uh, the sheet metal in your car is not one eighth inch thick. So the sheet metal that would have been on your tunnel, um, you're welding eighth inch thick metal to you know 16 gauge or 18 gauge metal, and, and it just ends up being very difficult to, uh, you know, you're welding something really strong to something not as strong. So you might need to reinforce the chassis if you need to do eighth inch plate. So here we're hammering over or making our bends with all of our steel and metal, and we fully welded it in place 360 degrees before we welded on the car. We knew that we weren't really gonna have access to a lot of it. Welded on the car, and we went ahead and put in some chassis paint, um, specifically in black, just makes it easier to, um, to paint everything kind of the same color, even though the chassis is white. Uh, and here's our drive shaft hanging in place. Super easy, and it worked out really, really well. Thanks for watching, subscribing, liking, and commenting on my videos. That's a great way to help support the channel. If you want to crank your support up a notch, consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. You get early access to videos, and you get to have your name immortalized here in the video alongside Jaffro and Patrick. I want to thank these two for their support over the last year, and I hope that you consider joining them. All right, thanks for watching the video, everybody. Make sure to stay safe and be healthy, and of course, keep modding your cars.